Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how to get started with the new editor in Greenfoot 3. So the first step is to download and install the software. The link is given beneath the video. Once you load up for the first time, you will get a screen like this. So what we want to start by doing is to create a new scenario. So you'll see that I'm using some screencasting software here uh, that shows you where I click and what I type up in the top right yet there. That's going to come in a bit handy later on. So you just need to give you a new scenario name. I'm going to call mine fish because it's going to be a scenario with some fish in it. This will create a new project and give you a little new project wizard. First thing it wants to do is know a name for your world. This is like your sort of backdrop for the scenario where everything takes place. And to use the new editor, the key is to keep this stride option selected. Uh, that's the new language in our new editor. Then you've just got to pick a background image. Uh, since I've got a fish example, I'm going to pick this watery background here. It then will ask you for a name for your new actor. The actor is like basically going to be your player character that runs around in the world and does everything. Ours is going to be a fish. And so I just need to pick a little fish image out of our image library here. Uh, this green, slightly grumpy fish. Again, we've uh, kept stride checked over there. So when you say OK, you're going to get uh, your initial scenario. And you can see that we've got the My World and the Fish classes down here. At the moment, we've just got the sort of empty backdrop there. Uh, and we need to start writing some code. So the way to open the editor is you just double click on Fish there. And that will set the editor loading up. It's just a tiny bit slow on first load. It looks like this. Let me just drag that into view. Um, so what we've got uh, in our new editor is this is the act method. Uh, and just like we used to have uh, in earlier versions of Greenfoot, you put all your code in the act method uh, of the actor. And that's what runs when the scenario runs. Now, to write code in a classic text-based editor at this point, you would just uh, start typing and writing your code. In the new editor, however, uh, you've got this little blue bar here. That's called a frame cursor. And when you've got a frame cursor active, as we have here, you need to use one of the shortcut keys, which are handily shown down the right-hand side, uh, to indicate what code you want to write. So first line of code we're going to write is a method call. So that's up there. That's C. So you press C, and you'll insert a method call into your code. Um, and what we want to do to get the fish running across the screen is we need to call the move method. So we just type in move, uh, and then to get across into the brackets, you can type a variety of keys. Uh, easiest one is perhaps the right arrow will move you across. And as you can see there, it wants a distance. Uh, this is in pixels. It's going to move each time. Uh, let's go for four as a decent number of pixels. Um, so once we've written the code, to then get the code running, we just need to go back to the Greenfoot main window, which is back here. While it's inactive, it grays out the world. But uh, once we click on it, uh, it's ready to go again. So what we need to do before we hit the run button down there is we've just got to add a fish into the world. Uh, there's a couple of ways to do this. So the easy way to remember is that you just right click on fish here. Top item in the menu is new fish. So we click that and we've got a fish ready to put in the world. Just click where you want to drop it. It'll appear there. And then when we click run, it'll run that code that we've just written over and over again and so what happens is the fish will run across the screen. Uh, Greenfoot stops it when it gets to the edge. Things aren't allowed to leave the world, so it will just stop there. So that's our first line of code, and that's been successful. What we want to do next um, is write our second line of code. So moving in a straight line, we get stuck on the edge of the screen. Uh, the obvious thing to do is also add a turn in there. So what we need to do is click into our code here so that we've got the blue frame cursor uh, beneath the move there. So you can do that just by clicking slightly beneath it. Uh, if you miss and you come down here, you can just use, for example, the up arrow uh, to move your frame cursor up and get to this point. We need another method call. So again, we're going to press C for calling a method. Once we've done that, we can then type in the name of the method. Uh, it's turn to turn us around. And as I mentioned before, you can use the right arrow to move across into the uh, parameter section. You can also uh, just type the opening bracket there and your cursor will move across. Uh, it won't type a second one, uh, 
um, it just moves you across into the parameter field there. What you need to do in the turn is tell it how many degrees to turn. Um, so five degrees is a reasonable amount. And if we go back to uh, Greenfoot again, so the fish has gone because each time we modify our code, um, it's what's known as recompiled, uh, and so we have to load in the objects again. We'll get in a second to how we keep the fish in the world each time we've modified the code. Uh, for now though, this gives me an opportunity to tell you the other easy way to add a fish to the world, and that is if you select it over on the right hand side, you get this thicker black, black background, and if you then hold shift on your keyboard, then wherever you click, you add a fish. So we can just add a whole bunch of these. So we've got the fish class over here, and here we've got four fish objects. They will have the same code, uh, and so they're going to follow a very similar pattern of behavior when I set this off. They're going to move in a circle. So there we go, we've got four fish swimming around in a circle. So that's all very well and good, but what we really want to do is to be able to uh, control the fish. It's not much of a game if the fish just go around by themselves. Uh, it's just like a virtual aquarium. What we'd like to do is is make a game of it. Um, so to do that we need to uh, have some keyboard control. Now what we want to do is we're going to have the fish always swimming around so the fish doesn't stop. It's just always on the move and we want to only do the turn here um, if a particular key is pressed down. So to do that, we're going to need an if statement. You can see over on the right-hand side, uh, it's I for if. You can just click over here to insert the if if you want, um, or you can use the I shortcut. So let's just click there. That gives us an if. Uh, there's a couple of hints down here to help you out. Um, so for example, this greenfoot.isKeyDown method is what we want to do keyboard control. But that's quite a long thing to type. Um, so what we want to do to make it easy uh, is um, just set off the code completion. So once we've typed part of it we can type the rest, it'll narrow down the options or we can just use the down arrow to move down to the one we want, greenfoot is key down uh, and then pressing enter will select it um, and then it wants to know the name of the key so we do this by uh, telling it the particular name, there's the up down left right arrows so if we say right there, then that will talk about the right key. So like I said, we want to move all the time. We only want to turn uh, when the right key is pressed. So what we need to do is take this turn code and put it inside the if. And the way you can do that in the new editor is you just drag the turn code and just drop it inside the if. So now if we go back to the editor over here, chuck our fish in again using the shift click method, then he runs in a straight line uh, when you're not pressing any keys, but if you hold right, then it turns around. Obviously, the other thing we need to do is to add some code to do the left turn. Uh, so there's a few different ways you can copy a block uh, in, sorry, copy a frame in our new editor. You can do copy and paste. You can also, uh, if you're dragging it, then when you're dragging, if you hold down Control on Windows or Alt on Mac, then it turns into a copy drag and so if I let go of the mouse here then we've made a second copy of the code we just need to change our copy so that instead of looking at the right key it looks at the left key and instead of turning plus five it turns minus five so if we now head back into our uh, sort of scenario running over here if we put the fish in and click run if I press left then the fish goes left if I press right then the fish goes right. Okay, so we've covered how to do uh, method calls and we've covered how to do um, if statements. What we want to do next is uh, to add some food into the world for the fish to eat. So to add a new actor into the world, you just right click on actor and you say new actor subclass. So this is a new kind of actor that we're going to add. So let's see if we can find some sort of food-like image in here and use that to decide what we're going to have for the fish to eat. Starfish? Let's try that. A fish can eat a starfish. Okay, so we put starfish in. Again, we've got stride checked, uh, all sorted. So we say OK. Now the starfish isn't going to do much at the moment. It's just going to sit still, uh, but the fish is going to 
uh, needs some code to be added so that it can actually eat the starfish. So the way we're going to do that is if we come back here, first thing we're going to do is check um, if we've actually run into a starfish, so to do some collision detection. The way we do that is with the is touching method. Um, so again, we can use this code completion uh, using this control space shortcut to bring it up. So there's is touching, so I can just press enter. Now we have to tell it what type we're interested in, and that's the starfish class, which we write like that, starfish.class. And inside here, what we want to do if we have come across a starfish, we want to remove it from the world. So the way we do that is with a method call, so we press C for the method call. It's called remove touching, um, and this also needs to know the class, which again, same thing, starfish.class. So now if we go back to the main Greenfoot window, we can add a fish in, and we can add a bunch of starfish. And we set it off. If I use my left and right keys, I can run the fish around and guide it around to eat all the starfish. Now, as I mentioned earlier, it's pretty annoying after a while that Greenfoot gets rid of the items in the world. So what we need to do is to add some code so that each time uh, the world is recreated after we've changed the code, we actually re-add uh, some objects into the world. So the way we're going to do that is we need to edit the world class. So if we double click on that, um, we get up the code. What we've got here is a constructor for the world. So this is the code that's run each time the world is recreated. And we want to insert a method call here that's going to re-add, for example, our fish to the world. So the way we do that, again, it's C for calling a method. And the method is called add object. And so this is going to take uh, three parameters. The first is what object we want to add. So we make a new fish like that. Uh, and then we also need to tell it the position to add the fish at. So the world's, uh, as you can see here, it's 600 wide and 400 tall. So if we add it at 300, 200, that's in the middle of the world. And if we go back uh, over here to the main window, now you can see that each time the world is recreated, we've got a fish in the middle of it. So that's great. But what we also wanted to do was um, to have uh, some starfish ready for us to create. So if we click down here, get the frame cursor beneath there, um, we want to add some starfish. So let's use uh, another method call to do that. So again, it's add object you'll see that if we use uh, the code completion to do this and select add object, then it not only does it uh, finish off the method name for us, it also gives us the parameter slots and the commas ready for what we want and gives us little hints here, as we've seen all the way along, um, on how, uh, sorry, what the method needs to be given. So this time we're going to make a new starfish Okay, and where are we going to put this in the world? Let's start by putting it at 100, 100, oops, one extra comma, uh, and that will be towards the top left of the world. So let's go back and test that. Yep, so we've added a starfish at the top left. And if we run now, then we can use our keys, run around and eat the starfish. But we maybe don't just want one starfish, we'd like uh, more than that. So what we're going to need to do is have a loop so we want to take this uh, second method call here, the starfish, and put it into a loop. So one way to do that is, uh, like I showed you earlier, we could just make a new loop frame and drag it inside. There's an alternative that if you put your frame cursor down here beneath uh, the frame you're interested in and hold shift and press up, then you've selected the frame, that's what this black border indicates, and now we've got some uh, different items available here, or a subset rather, uh, so that we can actually press, for example, F here to enclose this frame in a for each loop. The for each loop needs uh, three things, so it's just a little error at the moment while we're still writing the code. Uh, so we want the type of the loop variable, so that's going to be int for integer. We want the name of the variable, that can be i, it's a fairly standard computing thing. And then we want to tell it uh, what we're going to loop over. And so let's loop over the numbers 1 to 10 uh, using this dot dot operator. Um, and that will run this code 10 times. So now if we go back here, ah, there's only one starfish. And if you actually click on it, you can 
drag uh, objects while the scenario is paused in Greenfoot. And so if we drag these apart, we'd actually find, if we went all the way, that there are 10 of these starfish on top of each other. If we look back at our code, that's because although we go around the loop 10 times, we add the starfish at the same position each time. So what we need to do is change where we're adding the starfish. So what we need to do is come up with a different position for each starfish, and we can do that by generating a random number. So let's have um, a variable for the x position and the y position of the starfish that we're going to add. So to make a new variable, that's the uh, v shortcut. So we press v. What type do we want to give it? Well, it's going to be an integer for a position. We're going to name it x. Uh, so oh, I should go back slightly. So once we've typed int, you can then either use the right arrow to come across to the name, or if you also press space, that comes across to the name. So there's a variety of navigation keys uh, just to make your life easy. Now, uh, that declares our variable in x. We now also need uh, a variable for y, so we'll have int y. And now we need to assign a value to them. So to do that, we can use an assignment. And the shortcut for that is just the equals key. So if I press the equals key, then on the left-hand side, we want to assign into x. On the right-hand side, we want to uh, get a random number, and in greenfoot, that's the greenfoot.getRandomNumber method. Uh, so we can just select that, and we, we have to give it the limit of the number we want up to. Well, if we want it to be anywhere in the world, x should be a random number up to 600. And then we need to do the same for y, so let's this time use a copy and paste to make a copy. So I select that. I press Control c on Windows or Command-C on Mac, and I want to go beneath here, and then Control v on Windows, Command-V on Mac, just paste the code. Uh, if I now want to navigate into the code in order to edit it, I can use the right arrow key. When I've got my frame cursor there, right arrow just moves into the code beneath. I can then delete this X and replace it with a Y. And the other thing I want to do if I come across here is to change this 600, which was the width of the world, to 400, which is the height of the world. Then what I need to do is just replace the x coordinate that we had with our x variable, the y coordinate with the y variable, and now if we go back to our main window, then each time we reset, there'll be 10 starfish in different positions, and they're ready for our fish to run around and pick them all up. So that's just an example of how to get programming uh, with our new editor. Um, so check it out. The video, uh, sorry, the link to download the software will be beneath the video. Um, and we hope you like it. Thank you.